Hello guys, Deuteran slash Learn Swing here and welcome to episode 3 of the Commodore 32 tutorial series in which we will be making our first program. So I assume you watched episodes 1, or 1 and 2 and you have the SDK set up in Notepad++ and such, which is what I'll obviously be using. So to start, I'm going to open the SDK, you're going to put that over there and going to make a new text document and we're going to call this um, test. I don't know, you can call it what you want. Yeah, and a new uh, feature in the latest version 1.1.2 is that you can drag and drop files to set it as opposed to having to choose the file with this file open dialog. You can still do that if you want, but this is much easier. So you can just leave the default settings for now, high level, verify syntax, click go, it's not going to do anything because the file is empty. So I'm going to open this in Notepad++ and what we're going to do is go from language and select CD32. So that's going to make everything nice and colorful. Now you're going to need to type function main colon and then two square brackets like that. Now if you push go, nothing will happen because you haven't saved. So every time you make a modification and before you click go, you need to go file, save, or alternatively you can push control S. And you know it's saved when this icon is blue instead of red. And now it'll tell us that there are no errors, which is always a good sign, uh, and that there is one instruction. That one instruction is end. So if you try to upload this little program, you click upload, go, and you do the normal upload procedure, you will see only a single instruction was uploaded. So if we do the whole standard reset and on button, you'll see it turns on and then immediately turns back off and tells us that it ran successfully. Now obviously it didn't do anything. So that's what we're going to do now. So this is your standard um, program. This is pretty much the most basic program you can make. It is the most basic program you can make. It does absolutely nothing. Um, so I'm going to assume you have had programmed in the past with C or Java. But if you haven't, I'll still try to explain how this works. So uh, code is run from top to bottom, usually, unless you're using loops and stuff. I'll get to that later. But almost all the time, computers run things from top to bottom. The instructions you can use are very simple. You can use like math, input, output functions, and the computer will take everything literally. So it won't know what you want it to do unless you tell it exactly what you want to do. So we're going to create a little program that prints out something. Now, usually it's sort of tradition to make a hello world program that prints out hello world, but unfortunately this computer can't print out text. So we're going to print out a number instead. Now, how the heck do you print out a number? Um, I'm going to show you how to use the SDK manual included in the download and close this little start page because that bothers me. Um, if you go to, let me get this out of the way. If you go to the top, you go and find functions, the standard functions currently on page 13, but the page number will change occasionally because I add more stuff to the manual. Um, basically, it tells you all the, the list of functions that you have or the standard functions that you have, you also have GPU functions and stuff, different sections in the manual, and it tells you that the function to print out a value is print, and then it takes in a value. So yeah, there's two kind of things you can do. You can do variable setting, and you can run functions. Or for now, that's what we're going to be doing. with. So go print, and then you enter your number, say 42, and you end every line with a semicolon. So that's something you need to remember. So as the manual will tell us, the value given in the brackets will be printed out to the Minecraft chat output. So now that we have this little program, let's try and upload it. As you can see, it's slightly larger this time. And we're gonna reset the computer and run the program and 42. As you can see, we have printed out the number 42. Now if we add 
guess what it's going to do now? It's going to print out 42, and then it's going to print out 123, of course. So let's try that. There we go. Now it's very important to remember to end all lines with a semicolon and uh, if a function were to take in more arguments or more values or numbers you separate them by commas. Okay, So this is pretty basic, we can print out whatever numbers we want but we want to do something more, we want to store numbers in memory. So if you want to do that you're going to need to make a variable first. Variables are made before all functions so we're going to call it fair because we are super original and basically now we can actually set the value of this and that could then stand for a number and I'll show you how super useful this is later if you've ever programmed before you know that this is basically the most important thing in programming so we can go fair equals 10 now it is important that you don't do 10 equals var because that doesn't work everything on the left of the equal sign is set to what's on the right of an equal sign. You can also do 10 plus 6, for example. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to print out fair, and run that program. So 10 plus 6 is obviously 16. We're going to see if the computer can work that out. Uh, do the standard reset, and turn on again. And there we go, 16. You can also do multiplication, of course, with an asterisk, division with a slash. So we're going to do multiplication here. And what we can also do then is, because var still remembers its value, we can go and call another one blah. So we're adding a new variable called blah here. And can set blah to var minus 5, for example. And then we can print out blah, and we can still print out var. So as you can see now, var will be equal to 10 times 6, which will be 60. We will then print out 60. We will then set blah to what var is, which is 60, minus 5, which will be 55. We will then print out the value of blah, which is 55, and then we will print out fair to show that it kept its value, which is 60. Now this is a little confusing, I know, but just bear with me here. I don't think that uploaded correctly. I missed the first instruction because it took me too long to unpause the game. So yeah, do multiple uploads if your program starts getting big. And we'll reset the computer. And we'll turn it back on. Now we're going to watch the printouts. 16. 55. 60. And it turns off. And resets for the next time. So 60, 55, and 60. That would be correct and exactly what we expected our program to do. So, there we go. That's lesson one for making programs. Of course, it didn't do much. Uh, and the thing with these kind of programs is, of course, every time you run them, it'll do exactly the same thing, and you kind of already know what it's going to do, because, you know, you made the program. So next lesson, we're going to take user input with the little button over here, and we're going to do something interesting with that. So then I can enter 12, and then it will do different things depending on what number you enter. And you can enter millions of different numbers, so your programs will have millions of different things it could do depending on what the user gives it because right now it'll do exactly the same thing every time you turn it on so uh, thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and um, bye